Hey everybody, my name is Jerry and this is the iPad Magic Keyboard and I love this thing. I've had it for about six weeks and I just cannot get enough of it. I use it all the time for just about everything I can possibly think of. It has completely replaced my laptop, but this wasn't always the case. In fact, I almost returned this thing. So when the iPad Magic Keyboard was announced, it just blew people's mind. Everyone on the internet, anybody who followed Apple, just had to know how did the hinge work? How did it hold the iPad? How did it float above the keyboard? And when it went on pre-sale, I immediately ordered it. And when I received it, I had mixed feelings pretty much right away. One of the first things that you notice when you take it out of the box is just how heavy it is. Like this thing is heavier than the iPad Pro itself. I have the 12.9 inch version and with the iPad and the case together, they weigh more than a MacBook Pro. And then the second thing that you're gonna notice is that when you open it, it doesn't open smoothly like a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or any other Apple laptop that there has been. It's got some resistance to it. And when you open it to about that angle or exactly that angle, you hit a hard stop, which is a little jarring. And then you have the second hinge that brings it back a little bit further. Now, it is true that the floating hinge feels pretty magical. When you put the iPad on there and it's just held on by magnets, like that's pretty cool. Like nothing else is like that. Oh. And when I first got it, I didn't think that there was enough range of motion in the angles for adjustability to get the perfect angle for me sitting at a desk or on the couch or whatever. The next thing that I realized is that the trackpad just felt small. The trackpad is roughly the same size as the Surface Pro or what I have on my work Dell laptop, but uh, it just feels cramped. Like the vertical space is a bit smaller than those other trackpads, although the width is about the same. And just doing three finger gestures up and down or left and right, I'm always hitting the edges uh, on all sides, really. Now you might remember from my video about the top five best and worst things about this Magic Keyboard that when I type, because of the way I type and because of the way that the screen floats over the keyboard, my fingers would stretch out and hit the bottom of the display, which was very distracting and kind of took me out of whatever groove I might've been in when I was typing whatever I was typing. Like so many others, I found that the iPad weight distribution was a bit off. And because of the way that the iPad leans back and because the iPad itself is so heavy, it really just kind of doesn't have that good weight balance like a laptop has where all of the weight would sit in the base instead of in the screen. So it sits nice and tight on the desk or on your lap or wherever you put it. However, with the iPad Pro and the iPad Magic Keyboard, half of the weight is sitting on the top. So if you're not perfectly flat on a desk or a lap, then you have issues with this thing tipping over. And that really concerned me. And you can see in one of my previous videos where I'm sitting on a couch and I stop typing and I look up and the thing falls forward and could have been a big disaster. Another thing that I don't necessarily really love about this case is the rubberized texture to it or whatever the material is. It was the same thing that was on the Smart Folio keyboard case. However, it's not great. This thing picks up grease and dust like nobody's business. And after a while, those stains just stay. You can try cleaning them with water or rubbing alcohol or whatever else. And for a while they will come out, but eventually the stains just stay like really bad. And the last thing that I didn't like about this was the price at $349. I mean, that's an insane amount of money for a keyboard and a trackpad when I already had the smart folio keyboard and I could just get a magic mouse and be done with it. I could save a lot of money if I didn't keep this keyboard case. So I was going to return it. I had it all boxed up and ready to go. So just to prove to myself that I didn't need this thing, I put this right back into my smart folio keyboard and I went back to trying to use it the way I had always used it for the last year and a half. So I took it to the couch and I sat down and I started typing and that was all fine and then I needed to scroll on a website or on a text document or something and I, I went to reach for the trackpad and realized, oh, it's out there. So not a big deal, whatever. I'll just go ahead and reach up and scroll with my finger. Not a problem at all, right? Not worth $350 for that. Well, after a while, the sun started to go down and the room I was in started to get a little bit dimmer and suddenly I couldn't see the keys anymore because these keys are not backlit like they are on the Magic Keyboard. And then the next day I go outside and try and use my iPad in the patio with the sun up and it's bright and there's lots of glare. And although there's a couple of angles here to adjust on the Smart Folio case, 
It's just not nearly as much as with the Magic Keyboard, which I had thought was not enough previously. So at this point I figured, well, I still have time to return it. Maybe I'll go give it just another shot and see if I really want to return it or maybe I have a second opinion about it or whatever. So I went and unboxed the iPad Magic Keyboard, got it out and started using it again. And now I can't live without it. I'm not sure what it is. There's a lot of things that you might not like about this, but there's some things that just cumulatively override the negatives for me. Maybe it's the USB-C port on the side that allows me to charge and plug something else in. Maybe it's the adjustable angles that allow me to use it outside and reduce glare or the backlit keys. Maybe it is the integrated trackpad or just the cool floating design. But I use this all the time now as much as I possibly can for personal stuff and business stuff. I sit on the couch and I watch YouTube videos as you know, watching something else on the TV. I write my scripts out. I try and figure out my work plan. I work on my YouTube workflow. I work on budgeting and expenses and household stuff and basic web surfing and buying stuff on Amazon. I use this for all of my work stuff too as much as possible. I use it to take notes in meetings using OneNote or join Microsoft Teams meetings or even Zoom meetings with family or friends. I use Citrix to log into my work stuff remotely and manage servers. I do my video editing on this using LumaFusion and it's incredibly fast. It's way faster than my eight core desktop using Premiere Pro. This thing renders faster than real time. This thing is incredibly versatile and I just love it for just about everything. And at this point, I'm not sure that I'm going to own a personal laptop again. And when I want to sit back and relax and just use this thing as a tablet, I mean, it just comes right off. There's nothing you have to do, no cords, no cables, just remove it and you're done. When you're ready to go back to work or have a keyboard to send an email or to do whatever, just push it back on and you're done. So six weeks later, I love this thing. I cannot recommend it more. If you have an iPad Pro, you should absolutely get one of these iPad Magic keyboards. I know it's expensive. I know it has its faults, but overall, this thing has completely changed the way that I use my iPad and the way that I think about computers in general. I use this in every situation possible, sitting on my lap, sitting on a desk, bright light, no light, doesn't matter. This increases the versatility of the iPad tenfold for me, and I'm glad I didn't return it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button. If you already returned your iPad Magic Keyboard or you disagree with some of my points, let me know in the comments. You can follow me on Twitter at Jerry Schultz and hit subscribe for video updates. On a separate note, I keep changing my lighting, my studio, my set, everything about it. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, and what I can improve upon. I'm always looking for feedback and any tips would be greatly appreciated. So thanks and I'll see you next time.